maybe some seats over here up in the in the very front in the splash zone so you can make your way up there's maybe about six or seven seats up here uh welcome we're gonna get started in a few minutes would you like an intro or anything else all right good <laughs> so our first speaker today is mr craig foss uh logarithm labs labs threat intelligence team that sounds weighty um very pleased to have him. It's sound good? Excellent. Um, so again, uh, we're going to try to leave some time for questions. Um, if you need anything, let me know. And I think we're going to take it away as long as AV is happy. Excellent. Thank you. All right. You guys hear me OK? All right. Well, thanks for coming. Um, let's get started. So my name is Greg Foss. I'm a senior security research engineer. A little, there we go. Better? All right. So I'm a senior security research engineer, Logarithm Labs. I do a lot of research on various things. Uh, one of the things I did recently uh, was some wireless testing. And so I'm traditionally a web application pen tester. So my approach here is going to be kind of different than traditional wireless hacking. So that's kind of what the whole talk is, is based on. So about a year ago, I wrote a blog post called uh, Xfinity Pineapple. And this got, you know, got some people interested in this because it's, uh, you know, the reason I put this out there was I thought it affected the general population more than this vendor specifically. Because this is access points stood up in everyone's home that people could join and essentially use to do whatever. I mean, granted, you do have a Comcast account when you're using it, right? But... The way these things are set up makes it super easy to clone them. And same with tons of other uh, access points and tons of other captive portals out there. So that's essentially what we're going to dive into today. So first things first, pretty much everything I'm going to talk about is illegal. So I'm not liable for what you do after this talk. Um, so right here is the rules against like wireless piggybacking, stuff like that. Um, I'm also not a professional wireless security person, so I do a lot of pen testing and security research, but not all focused on wireless. So, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt, especially when it comes to legal terms, because I'm definitely not a lawyer either. So, with that, we aren't going to really have time to go into wireless basics, so like, you know, 802.11, web cracking, WPA, all that stuff. We're not going to really have time to touch on this. Um, so... The agenda for today is what we're going to be talking about. First, how to get free Wi-Fi, get free internet access through basic captive portals. And then access point cloning. What are ways to easily clone and weaponize captive portals for easy and rapid deployment so that you can attack users and companies and things like that? And then client attacks. We're going to go to the next stage. What do we do after we've actually popped an access point or gained access to an access point? Attack clients. And then you're going to have some fun with man-in-the-middle attacks. All right, so first, free Wi-Fi. The thing with free Wi-Fi is it's essentially everywhere. So, I mean, there's not really even much point in talking about it unless that's not the goal. Unless your goal isn't to just get to the Internet, right? Maybe you want to attack a user on a certain network or something like that. But there are lots of ways to bypass basic captive portals out there. Um, cool thing is sometimes if you just use Tor or VPN, some of these captive portals will just allow those ports. The only things they block are 80 or 443 until you authenticate, which is funny, but it actually works. Um, you can also try appending a question mark dot JPEG or dot PNG to the end of your strings, and it'll try and render it as an, as an image. A lot of captive portals still allow this through because they go and pull images from other sites to serve on their captive portal. Um, op look for open redirect flaws. This is where we're getting into the web applications and uh, iframes, because you can use these to browse other pages from within their captive portal. So you can just browse the captive portal and look for like an open redirect and actually redirect to a page you want to go. And you just keep using that to view pages. Or find an iframe and just change the, si the client side code. Sometimes this stuff just works. Um, and then tunnel over DNS. This is my favorite because it always works. Because they never block DNS because they want you to be able to look up servers. So if you just set up a, a server at home and then have it set up over DNS, then you can actually get to it usually. So it works really well. 
And these same tricks work if your ISP actually suspends your internet access, which is really cool. So say some of them have like a time limit or something like that, you can use these tricks to get around that. Um, so on time limited access points, there's a lot of ways that you can get around these. So one of, the, one of the easiest ways is just change your Mac once the time runs out. Super simple, because that's mainly the only identifier that they use. So super simple. Or you can go and attack users that have paid for access already. So you can actually de existing clients or deny a service to that access point to knock everyone else off. And then just sniff their Macs and use those to gain access and just keep them off, which it'll piss them off, but then you get free internet access. Um, Couple tools to do that. Air Replay NG and AirDrop work really well for deauthentication. MDK3 stands for Murder, Death, Kill. Um, really cool tool. Both of these are great if you have some hosts offline. Um, but yeah, just essentially sit there and sniff the MAC address and wait for the user to go idle and then modify your MAC and IP to match. So you can do this to not really tick people off, but wait for them to go idle so they aren't actually using the internet actively. And so you can wait for that so they won't be, you know, immediately that you're actually riding on their session. Um, the really cool thing, anyone who's ever done anything with wireless, definitely heard of Josh Wright. He has tons of amazing tools out there for wireless attacks and things like that. Um, one of the really cool ones is called CP Scan. And essentially, this does this for you. It'll automatically go and hijack sessions of other users while uh, just waiting to go idle. So it does all this in the background for you, which is really cool. So it automates this very manual process. Now, hijacking access points can be very easy, easy as well. Um, anyone in here like to fly drones? Yes. Drones are awesome, but they also come with no security whatsoever. So, like, wireless security is non-existent on these things. So you can completely, all you have to do is get the app, and then you can hijack any camera that's around you, any drone camera that's around you. It's cool because you can take pictures, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can't control the drone, essentially, but you can control the camera, which can be useful. So you just have to look for, like, the phantom drones. They all come with the phantom underscore, and then it's usually a long number. Um, this one's mine, so I call it best Korea drone, just because it's funny. But, um, but yeah, that's how you find these things. Then you can just hijack them, super easy. And then you can see what they're seeing, take over. Pretty fun. Now, the cool thing about free internet is a lot of times people are just willing to give this out, right? So right here's a good example. This guy just wanted, he just asked someone for their uh, ISP credentials and they gave them to him. So a lot of times we don't even need to go through all this work, right? But let's get into cloning. So let's talk about how we're going to actually attack some access points and attack some clients. So the evil twin attack. This is an attack that's been around for ages. It's a very popular attack, very easy to implement. I mean, the, the Wi-Fi pineapple was essentially created to do one of these attacks. It um, works really easily. So let's dive into this a bit. So first thing you have to do is find a wireless access point. There's tons of apps and tons of ways you can do this on your computer. This is just one on, uh, on your Android phone, just the Wi-Fi Analyzer app. Really good for finding those access points. Simple, right? Just drive by your target, right? You don't even have to get out, especially if you get a very long antenna. You can reach these from very far away. So you can actually target very far away bis businesses and clone their access points for when you're at that business later that week, right? So basic captive portals. The cool thing about these, um, in terms of web application security, is they all are prone to basic web app vulnerabilities. A lot of them are. So like right here, you can see this page is served up over HTTP. So we could sniff the communication. And then right here, they're passing the MAC address in plain text within the, uh, within the string right here. So all of this is super easy to sniff. So if you're trying to hijack someone's session or something like that, it's easy because it's in plain text right there. You don't even have to join to find this. You just have to start sniffing at them, essentially. And there's tons of these access points. Um, they all ask you to provide uh, various information. Some of them are very complex. Some of them are very basic. This one, fortunately, at least has HTTPS. That's better than the last one, right? Now, some of these, which are very complex, the way you have to clone these so you have to go through and not only just clone this first page, but actually use the application and then clone every subsequent page as well. 
if you're going after credit cards or something like that, which I wouldn't recommend, but it's something someone could do. This would be a great way to do it. Just clone all of this page, make a whole site, and then I'll show you how to stand this up, essentially, and attack people. Um, yeah, see you. Lots of these. There's, there's everywhere. So, but all of these are, are fun, but the ones I really want to focus on are the ISPs, because these give us the most bang for the buck, right? And these are everywhere, uh, especially one of them. This one, this happens to be uh, Xfinity. This is their map of Denver, and it's essentially just everywhere. These are the Xfinity Wi-Fi home uh, networks that are available. So these are the ones that are bridged off of access points that people own or, or rent from uh, Comcast, and they bridge these access points off of their existing network. So this is essentially a map of that, and this is why I went this route, because it's such a wide attack surface. So how do we do this, right? What are the steps to clone and weaponize access points? Pretty simple, connect, wait for the splash page to come up, close the splash page, open it in your browser. Is it some random page? Uh, usually HTTP works better than HTTPS, just based on the captive portal. Um, but then when the splash page comes up, clone everything, download the whole page, and then use subsequent pages, and then clone those as well. Just download them. So once you get all the content, um, you also want to change your user agent string and do the same thing. So you want to change it to like an iPhone or an Android or something like that, so you can get the mobile versions as well. And we want to do some dynamic redirects based on the, uh, based on what, what the user clicks and everything like that. And then replace the form processor. This is the key part. And I'll show you guys the processors we use, but essentially once you switch out the form processor, then instead of, you know, passing them through whatever it originally did, you just log their credentials and then pass them through to whatever you decide to send them to next. And then modify the HTML of the page to point to your new form processor. Simple, right? And then deploy the captive portal. And we'll talk about all the ways you can uh, deploy this shortly. And then once you deploy this, you want to set up IP tables in a way that once people authenticate, they'll be passed through transparently. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So here's a basic cloned access point. So this is the mobile version here. Here's the standard version, desktop version. And so this is just one of the basic uh, XME Wi-Fi uh, captive portals. And so right here are the logs. And so you'll notice I have two uh, log messages. So the reason is I actually have them uh, authenticate twice. The first time I always have it fail and then the second time I allow them through. This is because in case they fat finger it or something, you know, I don't want to get the wrong credentials, and it looks believable to them, because how many times do you enter a captive, or, uh, your password and have to type it again, right? So I did this so we could make sure to catch the right credentials. Now mobile cloning. A lot of times you don't have your computer with you, but there's a really sweet access point that you're by that you want to clone, right? So there's a lot of tools to actually clone uh, HTTPS with your phone. So first one is HTTrack, which is a very cool tool. You can just browse these sites and, uh, and clone the entire thing. You can actually set it to go through and index the site too and clone everything. The cool part is once you clone it, it actually keeps a nice little uh, index of all the pages that you've cloned essentially right here. So super simple to go back and pull those off your phone at a later time. Now, there's another tool called VT View Source. This allows you to view the source code, and then you can pull the page content that way. This one's not as easy to pull down. It takes a little more work, but you know you can pull exactly what you want when you're using this app. So now that we've actually talked about how to do this, let's talk about how to uh, attack clients, how we're going to actually go after some clients with this, right? So how to deauthenticate clients and deny service to access points. So Air Replay NG, we, kind of, we talked about this earlier, just basically pass the uh, deauth flag at the access point you're trying to deauth users from. File to Air, another tool by Josh Wright, really cool tool to drop connections essentially. Um, and then spoof the access point Mac, good way to essentially do that. So spoof it. So once you knock off the real access point, you want users to connect back to you. So take out the real one, set up your fake one, and then have everything pass through your computer. Essentially what we're doing here. And then MDK3 as well. So essentially, this is what we're doing. Now there's a really cool tool that I found a while ago out on GitHub. It's by uh, Sofron, I believe. Um, 
So Wi-Fi Fisher is a really cool tool because it does all the things we just talked about in an automated fashion. So you can go through, kick clients off, stand up a fake access point, all that good stuff, uh, very automated, which is really cool. And so essentially this is what we're looking to get, right? <laughs> so here's our little pineapples, typical method to deploy this. Um, so essentially first method, Wi-Fi pineapple. This is a great tool and you can actually go buy one. I think they have the Hack5 uh, shop upstairs. So yeah, you should totally go get one of these. Um, they're awesome, they're really fun. It makes uh, these type of attacks really easy to deploy and uh, see through to the end essentially. But there are some caveats to it. There are some tricks that I found that you have to implement within uh, captive portal spoofing specifically to get them to work on the Wi-Fi pineapple. And so I'll go over those right now. So the first thing you need is a generic splash page. So what we do for that is we just have this basic splash page and all it is is a redirect. It just redirects the destination on the pineapple where we posted the real code. And so I do this because we're deploying different captive portals all the time. So I want to make a bunch of different folders. So right here we just make a directory. And so we just put each different company or whatever we're cloning in this directory. And so whatever pen test you're on, you can redirect them dynamically depending on the use case. So that's just why I like that. Uh, that configuration. Now the landing page, this is essentially whatever page you just cloned, but there are two pieces of code that you'll need to get this to work on the pineapple. Um, the first of which is this JavaScript up here. So this JavaScript essentially, all this really does up here is it, it grabs the auth target variable. And so we need the auth target variable to be passed through because uh, the Wi-Fi pineapple uses no dog splash in the back end. And so it needs the uh, auth target to know where to direct users to and to know that, you know, once it's passed this variable through that they're actually allowed through and they can browse the internet, right? So the other piece you need is you actually need to gather the auth target variable within the form itself so we can pass it through. So right down here, we just include this little script tag and essentially we just include that off target variable within the script tag and then we pass it through. So, and this is just within our basic index page for the pineapple. And then the form processor. So for the pineapple, this is essentially the back end for what we're going to be passing the users to after they authenticate, right? So we're going to take uh, their, their credentials and we're going to add them to this auth.log file or whatever you decide to name it. Um, so all we do is we just write all the post variables to that. The nice thing about that, um, just with uh, taking all the post variables here, is that we don't have to modify this form processor depending on what captive portal we use. We can take any form, any captive portal and this form processor will work with that. So it's kind of basic just set up in that way for that reason. And so once you have all this ready, you want to push it up to the pineapple. So, you know, SSH in, make a new directory, make sure you have enough space to store this there, and then push up all your code, right? So pretty simple, just SCP it over. And we're going to go in and configure Karma. So, and there's a few different ways to do this. Um, so you want to set this up, you set up your S SSID to mimic the one that you want to clone. And then down here, we're going to use the evil port up portal uh, pineapple bar infusion. And so once we get this all up and running, there are a few other little tricks to get this running. Um, so if you if you do want to do this, let me know and I can help you with the other tricks with like the no dog splash config and stuff like that. But essentially at this stage, you're ready to launch it. And so once you click run, you're ready to go. So here's like a basic splash page. So we'll hit that and log in. Um, but be careful with the pineapple. So anyone here at DEF CON last year? Oh yeah. Oh, nice. So <laughs> good to know. <laughs> yeah. So so be careful. I mean, like these tools are fun and stuff, but I wouldn't try these attacks against like people here at B sides or DEF CON or things like that, because I mean, there's people in this room that know way more about this stuff than I do. So I mean, you just got to be careful, right? So, you know, make sure you know completely what you're doing before attacking people, especially people that are in the same space, the security space, you know, there's a lot of sharp people here. So you got to be kind of careful if you're going to start messing with these here. So, <laughs> so the pineapples, pretty easy set up. You can also do this on an existing router. So the cool thing about this, what, what I like about using a normal router is cloning like one of the ISP pages or something like that looks very believable because it's there. 
And so it's just sitting there all the time. But that's also a downside because if that's found out that it's fake, you could be in some trouble. So, so just be careful. Um, the way to do this on an existing router, um, the, the method I've used is just to deploy DDWRT and then uh, essentially deploy no, no cat splash in there. Uh, essentially the same thing as no dog splash, just a different, uh, I think it's like the vendor version of it or something like that. Um, but essentially once you have this deployed, there's a basic configuration page which allows you to configure uh, hotspots. So there's a bunch of different ones. So this one, this is the Buffalo DDWRT build right here. So you have Sputnik, Hotspot System, Wi-Fi Dog, Chili Spot. Um, I haven't used uh, these other ones. I've used this one, but I haven't tried these other ones. But a lot of options here. So the way this works is you just do the same sort of thing. Uh, you just where you want them to direct to. Um, and so this you don't even, it doesn't actually pass them through, uh, cause they could actually browse the internet right from hitting here. But since they're hit with an authentication page, they might actually enter their credentials. But it doesn't lock them down in the way you can do with the pineapple. So, one of my favorite methods though, is using your laptop and just set up a hotspot right from here. So all you need is like an external alpha wireless card or something like that. And then you can deploy these things very easily, like set, set your computer up, you know, in your backpack or something like that when you're walking around or hide it somewhere, um, get a really big antenna, and then it works pretty well. You'll catch a lot of flies that way. Um, so the way to do this is actually use Kali Linux. And Kali, once you get someone going through your, your box and you're running Kali, you can do anything to them. Like Pineapple has a lot of really cool tools, but Kali has like, so you can do so many cool attacks once people are connected to you, if they connect into your actual system. So, pretty fun. Um, so one of the tools I used to do this on uh, CaliBox is called Pwnstar. A really cool tool, it's by Silver Fox. Um, awesome, awesome tool. And essentially it streamlines this whole process. So by default, this uh, is the landing page it comes with. It's the standard uh, Google authentication page, which, you know, it's, it might trick some people, right? It might trick grandma or something like that. But what we want to do is we want to replace this. We want to make this something more realistic. So this is one, I actually worked for Logarithm, and so what we did, we actually stood up one of these attack training exercises for our employees at one of our big events. And so we hid about four Wi-Fi pineapples throughout the event center and set up these fake captive portals and you know, got our salespeople to log into them. It was, it was fun. <laughs> the key though, you know, if you're gonna do something like this, it's not to call anyone out or make fun of them or anything like that. Um, even though they are salespeople, we don't make fun of them. Um, but it's to train them, to show them these kind of attacks are very real, very easy to deploy, and they could be deployed anywhere. I mean, I'm guessing right here at B-Sides, some people are probably running some fake APs. I'm willing to bet. Um, <laughs> But it's fun too. It's fun doing this stuff. So how's this work, right? Let's see the back end of, of essentially this ta attack using Pwnstar. So right here, we're just running iwconfig. Now we're going to plug in our uh, external wireless card. So we see it popped up right there. So we're going to connect it to our Kali box. And we'll run iwconfig once more just to make sure it's connected, right? There we go. Looking good. So now, simple as this, we just run Pwnstar. This is why I love this tool. So it streamlines this whole process, makes it super easy, super fast, that thing. So what we're going to do, we're, there's a ton of different attacks you can do here, but we're going to go down to the advanced menu. And from here, we're going to use the captive portal attack. Now there's there's all, you can deploy exploits and stuff like that directly from this tool. Makes it really easy to attack clients. Um, so yes, we'll be giving internet access. And we're going to define ETH0 as our access point. And WLAN1 is our wireless card. So super simple. It's like paint by numbers to hack people. It's awesome. So right here, we're just going to randomize our Mac. Um, this is one of the most important things you can do if you ever do wireless pen testing is change your Mac. Um, we catch people all the time because they don't change their Mac. So it's, it's a very, uh, very common thing that people just over. Um, so right here, we're just setting all the variables. Here's, we're getting our IP. We just set the access point channel. 
And now we're going to do the bullseye attack. So the bullseye attack is where we're going to spoof one, uh, one uh, access point. Um, these other ones, like a black hole, we can spoof all of them. Both, we can spoof all of them and have our one access point that we, that we stood up. Um, but we're just going to go for the one access point. And so we plugged in Xfinity Wi-Fi. That's the one we're going to be spoofing. And so now it's launching all the tools we need in the back end. So it's running Airbase, um, showing us all of our all of our configuration settings. And so right here, we're going to choose simple. Now, by default, the simple hotspot looks like that one I showed a screenshot of earlier. But we actually replaced that with our fake uh, with our new captive portal. So we just have it point there instead. And so there's a few configuration items in the back end with uh, PwnStar as well. So if you want to set this up, just, just let me know, and I can show you kind of some of those tricks. Um, so essentially, we have everything running. Now we just have to set up our tools so we can actually sniff traffic once they're connected also. Because credentials are good, but we also want to see what else is going on. We want to capture other, other data. So start ferret, start SSL strip, start all the, all the good tools. Now I'm not going to tail any of these right now, because they're just going to write out and we'll look at those later. Um, the one file we are going to tail is our log file. So the one that we're, we generated for the captive portal we're, st we're standing up. <coughs> So, looks like we're good to go. Now we'll just tail our logs and wait for some people to come and join our access point, right? So let's switch over to the client. I decided to do a mobile client for this one just because it's fun. I want to figure out how to record on my, app, on my phone. <laughs> so we've just joined this Xfinity Wi-Fi access point, right? So now we're connected. Now let's try and browse somewhere. I'm going to go to the DC303 page. If I could type it right. There we go. <laughs> so there we go. There's our splash page. And so we got the mobile version. So you know this is working, right? And you can see it's going to our directory X and then our index page, our fake, our fake page. And say so sign in, but it doesn't work, right? Invalid username. Yeah, it's totally believable. And so they enter it again. Sure enough, they're allowed through now. And then we redirect them back to the real access point dropout page. So there we go. So now they're passing through our access point. I mean, simple as that, right? And now they can go back to their, uh, their original page. So simple, right? So how's this look on the back end? So as we can see right here, we'll see some queries starting to run here. And essentially, this is all the apps on my phone's back end just calling out from the second I connected this thing. So you can see how much data your phone leaks, too, just from this little demo. Um, so right here, you see there's an Amazon calling out. Um, right there, they're trying to hit DC-303, and they're getting redirected to this X directory, which is all of our cloned files, right? And so now you can see they've logged in one time. So there's their first attempt. And then log in one more time, and now they're passed through essentially all the way through the access point. So simple, simple hack, but very effective. So now you can take this a step further. You can actually launch uh, browser attacks and things like that once they actually connect through. And now that, I mean, we don't have too much time to go into how to do all of that, but you know, essentially, once you, once you own their connection, you can do anything you want to them. I mean, look at like the dark hotel attack. This is how they deployed malware to targets that visited specific hotels. They own the access points. Um, so you get a lot of potential once you own the access point. So now, the problem with bringing your computer around everywhere, though, to do this is it's big, it's bulky, it's, uh, you know, it's a dead giveaway that you're up to no good. Like, if I had my antenna hooked up right now, it probably wouldn't be taken too kindly. Um, so, you know, you have to be aware of that. So, so the best way to get around that is actually use a uh, BeagleBone or Raspberry Pi or something like that to combine the, the versatility of Kali Linux with the portability of something like a Wi-Fi Pineapple. So then you have that whole wealth of tools right there uh, that you can deploy and hide very easily. So the one I use, I just use the BeagleBone Black um, and then uh, just a basic alpha Wi-Fi card. And there's smaller ones that you can get now, so they can be even, even more stealthy. So once you, do, once you set one of these up, this is kind of what it looks like. 
Um, and you want to get creative with these things. You know, you can tape it together. You want to make it look like something that's supposed to be there. Um, if you're going to deploy this within some organization somewhere and hide them somewhere where it's not too easy to find, right? So, next thing though, say you want to take it to the next step and actually do this from your phone directly. So, uh, anyone here mess with NetHunter? Very cool. There's uh, so much potential within NetHunter. You can essentially do all of these same attacks right from your phone. Uh, you can actually install Pwnstar on, uh, on NetHunter as well. So it works really well. The other option is also Pony Express. They have some really cool tools like the Pwn phone and stuff like that. They're actually even more extensible. You can do like Bluetooth attacks and stuff that are very cool from the Pwn phones. So essentially here's what it looks like. This is actually a few versions older the uh, splash page here, but you can essentially have Pwnstar up and running on your phone. Now when people connect through here, it's going to be pretty slow. So, you know, you're going for credentials essentially if you're going this route, but, you know, at least you got the credentials. Now, tons of other ways to do this. Lots of tools out there. Definitely check out the Pony Express guys. They have some really cool tools for deployment in this kind of uh, scenario. Uh, check it out. Uh, TP-Link um, access cards are, are very good as well. So definitely look into those. So now what about man in the middle? Now that we've covered kind of how to build these attacks, how to clone some web pages, how to actually do some stuff against clients, what about actually getting into man in the middle? How do we actually get usable data out of this, right? There's tons of tools out there for man in the middle. Um, these are just a few of my favorites that I've listed here. Um, but essentially, I mean, we could do a whole talk on just man in the middle in traffic, uh, especially once you own the access point. Um, but the cool thing about captive portal based access points, if you're after a client, you don't even need to the captive portal to attack the clients. The captive portal just blocks you from accessing the internet. It doesn't block you from accessing other people's computers. And that's something, that's a big gap I've seen with companies we've talked to about this kind of thing, is they don't realize that, oh, you can actually access my system when I'm on this access point, even though you didn't authenticate to it. Um, so I mean, that's a big, it's a big target right there. So if you know someone's on an open access point, you don't even have to have credentials, just go after that person, right? Now, what about some fun with man in the middle? Anyone ever mess with Snapception? This is a fun tool. Essentially what this does is it takes Snapchat pictures and it actually decodes them and shows them on the screen. So as people are uploading Snapchat images and stuff like that, it just pops them out of the network and shows them to you. So it's funny because people think, oh, no one's going to see this, but you can right there. <laughs> Love Thy Neighbors. This is a really fun project. This is also by Josh Wright. Um, really cool tool. Essentially, you can do some evil people, like progressively blur images on pages. You can like send them the cat facts and stuff. So, like, it, it's real. There's all sorts of fun stuff. Um, Airpone. That actually came out of DEF CON like a long time ago. But you can actually still use this to do some fun attacks. Um, Interceptor NG is actually one of my favorite little tools just for uh, using on the phone, essentially. It, it has an Android application. There's also a Linux client app application for it as well. Um, but really cool because it makes it super sidejack people just by sniffing their traffic and art poisoning, all that good stuff. And there's tons of other things you can do. But So let's take a, a look at Interceptor NG. It's because I really like this one. It's a fun one. So first we're going to spin it up. Got my little Android phone here. This is my wife's iPhone right here. <laughs> so right now we're just scanning the network. We're going to find the IPs. Um, so now we're going to pick her phone out. And we'll just select that one. And so now we're going to go over and we're going to spin up, or we're going to select resurrection, SSL strip, um, lock screen off. So, so we can set this up and lock our phone, and it'll keep running in the background. We don't have all this stuff running. We want to save a PCAP, um, do all that good stuff. So right now, we are art poisoning my wife's phone. And she's going to visit Amazon. Have to refresh it again. You'd think a recording it would be better, but. So now we can see her phone's 
uh, traffic is going through our phone, and she's browsing Amazon. And just like that, we've stolen her cookies. And this is because Amazon does some requests over HTTP that do send the cookies sometimes. Um, you can see we're logged into her account. We just select it, and now we can log in. This is why I like Interceptor NG so much. So easy to use, super simple tool, very effective to essentially hijack session tokens. Um, but, I mean, Amazon's aware of this because that's why they have you authenticate to do anything that actually has value. You know, you have to re-authenticate if you're going to change your cart or update your, your info, stuff like that. So they, do, they are aware of this. Um, so how do we defend against this? I mean, this is kind of the whole point of why we're talking about all this stuff in the first place, right? Um, you want to try, like, if you do have to use an open access point, you do want to try and VPN your traffic. Um, you know, use a VPN, VPS, uh, SSH port forwarding, something like that, so you're tunneling your traffic so it's not as easy for someone to intercept. But, I mean, as you guys saw, the second you connect to an access point, you're already leaking info. So, I mean, this isn't an end-all, be-all. Um, when you're somewhere like cards, make sure you turn off all your wireless cards, turn off Bluetooth, turn off all that stuff, like airports, things like that. Very crowded areas, you want to turn off all of this stuff, because even when your computer's asleep, sometimes it will still be trying to beacon out. Um, when a hotspot's not served up over HTTPS, when they aren't encrypting your traffic, that's something to definitely be aware of, right? Um, and then duplicate networks with different encryption. So say there's one network that has uh, WPA2 encryption and then one network that has no encryption but same name, that's something you definitely want to be aware of and you want to avoid the one that is the, uh, you know, that is open. Use different login details and passwords for public Wi-Fi. You, you 